In this video, I'm going to show you how my PFSense is configured for gaming. Um, I'm going to go over all my settings, and there are five things you should do on your PFSense right now to get better gaming experience. So let's dive into it. Let's open the browser first. Log into your PFSense. Once you're logged in, let's click on System, Advanced, Networking. Go all the way down and make sure all of this is unchecked. And if you're using a Realtek card, you may not necessarily get better performance because some of the Realtek cards are not very well supported without offloading. Uh, but with me, it's Intel. And if you have an Intel, uh, just go ahead and uncheck all of these options and then click save. We're going to do that. Number two, we need to enable NAT UPnP. So we're going to go to service, click on UPnP. And we want to click enable through the first three check boxes. Enable UPnP, allow UPnP port mapping, allow NAT PNP port mapping. External interface will be VAN. Interface would be LAN for you if you don't have any VLANs. For me specifically, it's uh, I'm using my gaming VLAN. That's why I have that checked. You might want to click on LAN. Next, we're going to go all the way down to UPnP access control list. Uh, let's take a look at ACL entries here. Um, I have my ACL entries to set for my entire gaming network, uh, which is 10.50.0.0 slash 20. And it is set to allow ports between 1024 and 65535. Now, the reason for this is this is not very secure because obviously I'm allowing my entire network to use UPnP. Uh, but I'm only using this for one device, which is my gaming uh, uh device where I play uh, games on. So I'm okay with that. I'm not putting anything important on my gaming network. So for you, that might not be the case. And you might be using your LAN network for UPnP. So when you do add your LAN network, we're going to do something like this. We don't want your entire LAN. Let's say your LAN is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. We are only going to allow the IP address of your device that needs this ability. So your gaming device, pretty much. Uh, if you're playing on a computer, if you're playing on a PS4, you would be entering each device specifically with a slash 32 uh, CIDR notation. And you would go ahead and click Save. So let's say your device is 192.168.0.99. We're going to do slash 32. And we're going to allow all these ports. If you have another gaming device, you can do the same thing again and just change the IP address. Let's say 81. So you can add that list uh, for each specific IP address. Uh, I'm going to remove that. And once you have added, you can click Save. And that does the set of our NAT UPnP. Uh, there's additional setting uh, that you might want to go to your firewall. You want to go to NAT, go to Outbound. And we are going to click on add because we want our NAT traffic to have a static port. So I'm going to click on add. And we're going to add our device or IP address that we added under UPnP. For me, it's 10.50.0.0 slash 20 slash 20 right here. And do static port enable and just call it UPnP for gaming VLAN and save. Okay, I'm going to apply that. Number three is going to be aliases. Let's add some aliases. We're going to use these aliases to, in our traffic shaper queues. So let's go to firewall alias. Click on ports. We need to create two aliases, one for Fortnite TCP port, one for Fortnite UDP port. You can click on add and you can copy this configuration. I'm going to open for TCP first and just add all these ports. Name it Fortnite TCP port. Just a couple and then I'm going to save that. 
You're going to add one more, name it Fortnite UDP port. I'm going to edit that so that you can see all the ports I've added. Copy the exact same configuration and click Save and Apply. Once we have the aliases created, we're going to go under Traffic Shaper, go to Wizard. Now, depending on how many WAN links you have, um, you would select either of these. Uh, I only have one WAN connection, so I'm going to select Dedicated Link. Click on Dedicated. WAN connection, I only have one. Click on Next. Local Interface, this is going to be LAN for most people. Um, I have it on Gaming because I use Gaming VLAN as my gaming network. So, and we'll leave this at PRIQ, VAN, PRIQ. Upload, I'm leaving it at 30. Uh, I usually prefer to keep it at 85%. Uh, I'm currently getting about 32, so I'm setting this cap at 30. Uh, my download, however, is about, I, I'm supposed to get one gigabit, but I get usually 900, so I'm gonna set this to 800, just to be on the safe side. Uh, and then we can click next. Skip this part, next, next. And then we can click next again. We don't care about the P2P. Uh, network games, we're gonna check mark, prioritize network gaming traffic, enable Battle.net, EA Origin, PlayStation Console, Steam, Xbox Live, Google Stadia. Um, and I'll click on next. Next one more time and finish. Once this is completed, you'll notice if you go to rules and go to floating, you'll notice the traffic shaper has created a lot of floating rules. Um, we want to create two rules for our two aliases that we created earlier. Uh, so you'll notice uh, we have UDP here. Uh, there's a pre-created rule. So I'm going to create a copy of that rule because we want everything to be exactly the same except the ports. So let's do a copy of this existing UDP rule and we'll click on apply immediately. You can switch this to IPv4, uh, leave this any. I'll switch this to Fortnite UDP ports as we have UDP rule selected. So I'm gonna click Fortnite UDP here as well. And then we're gonna change the description, call it Fortnite UDP ports and go all the way down and you should make sure Q games is selected for the uh, Q. And then we're gonna save that. Let's not hit apply yet. Let's create another rule for our TCP ports. So I'm gonna select a random rule that was pre-created and do a copy. And we're gonna click on apply action immediately. Switch this to IPv4, leave protocol to uh, TCP. We're going to change the ports here. Fortnite TCP ports, Fortnite TCP ports, and the description would be Fortnite TCP ports. All the way at the bottom, ACK Q, we want it to be Q ACK, and Q Games would be our uh, Q. Click on Save and Apply Changes. That should be it for our traffic shaper. So now we're on to the final step. Uh, this is completely optional and I only recommend it for Intel network card users. This is going to require us to SSH into our PFSense. Uh, so we're going to go to System, Advanced, Admin Access, Checkmark Enable Secure Shell, and click Save. This is going to enable SSH to your PFSense. Uh, the reason for that is we're going to SSH using PuTTY, and then we're going to create a configuration file that will load up every time your PFSense boots up. Uh, we're going to put some values in it uh, that is going to help with the performance. So let's, since we have SSH enabled, I'm going to SSH into my PFSense using PuTTY to enter the host name. 22. Let's log in. I never get the password right for the first time. Okay, perfect. So now we have logged in. We are going to 
select eight to open the shell. You might need uh, a text editor for this, uh, so because Nano is not installed by default, so you might want to run pkg install nano and click OK. For me, it's going to fail because I, d I don't have traffic routing through my LAN. Uh, everything is over the VLAN, so this is going to fail, but it should succeed for you. And once you have nano installed, it's pretty quick. You should get back to uh, the shell. And we're going to type nano slash boot slash loader dot conf dot local and hit enter. What This will create a file for you called loader.conf.local and we are going to enter these values within the file. I'm going to post this in the description so that it's easier to copy and paste. But essentially, you need to add these values. Um, notice if you have an Intel card. I only recommend doing this if you have an Intel card, by the way, uh, just because these values, they reflect to the Intel network card. The IGB interface, the real tech might be different, so the value for it might be different. So step five is mostly optional, uh, but I would recommend that you only do it if you have an Intel network card and if it shows IGB um, within your PFSense. You can find it when you by going into your assignments, and you can see for me it's IGB, which is why I have it added this way. The next thing, uh, once you have this added, we are going to click on Control plus O and then Enter to save the file and then Control plus X to exit out of that file. And then you're going to have to reboot the PFSense and hit Enter. And once it's rebooted, we are all done. And then you can start your game and check how it performs. If you like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, comment down below if you'd like to see more, or if you have any questions. And thank you for watching.